In the stationary system, capital K, and if we are far from the source, electromagnetic waves can be written with sufficient approximation in this fashion. Remember that we used this notation to write the electric field. We use the components capital X, capital Y, and capital Z. This is Einstein's notation. And also for the magnetic field C times B, Einstein uses the letters L, M, N. The solution to the Maxwell's equations, in particular the wave equations, in vacuum, very far from the source, which generates these electromagnetic waves, can be written like this, capital X equal to X naught sine of phi. Now we will also write the expression for phi, but first let me write capital Y equal to Y naught sine phi, capital Z equal to Z naught sine phi. And then we also have L equal to L0 sine phi, M equal to M0 or M0 if you want, sine phi, N equal to N0 sine phi. Where phi can be written in this form, omega times T minus 1 over C, Lx plus my plus nz. Omega is the frequency, the angular frequency of these waves, whereas x0, y0, z0, and also l0, m0, n0 are the vectors that define the amplitude of these waves. And l, m, and n are the so-called direction cosines of the wave normals. So this expression can also be written as some vector, let's call it n hat, and we take the dot product with the, the vector x, which can be written as x, y, z. So this n here represents the normal to the wave. And if you insert these expressions into the wave equation, this one, or for example, this one, and the wave equation, remember, has this form, Laplacian of some variable, for example, x minus 1 over c squared d squared x dt squared equal to 0. So instead of x here, in place of x, we can put capital X or capital Y, capital Z, but also L, M, or N. It's the same. And we have to treat these amplitudes as constants with respect to these variables. And then what you get if you insert the equations into the wave equation here, you will get that uh, this equation is satisfied if uh, L squared plus M squared plus N squared is equal to 1, meaning that this vector here is a unit vector. So that's why I used this notation with the hat to denote that it is a unit vector. Now, if we go to a moving frame, if we look at these solutions from a moving frame that uh, Einstein calls lowercase k, we can rewrite the expressions like this. x prime will be equal to x prime 0, but x prime 0 is equal to x 0. You can check also the previous lecture on how to derive the electric field written in a stationary frame or in a moving frame. We have some formulas. Last time I derived some of the formulas, not all of the formulas, because it is just algebra. And after you get the intuition, you can do it quite easily. There are ways that are quicker to derive these expressions, for example, by using tensors. If we use the electromagnetic tensor and we change frame of reference, it would be very easy to derive the expressions because it will be just mathematics. But Einstein had a lot of intuition. So in his case, yes, he used a lot of mathematics, but there is a lot of intuition in his papers. So it is not so straightforward sometimes to understand his logic 
Of course, it's to be expected since nobody did something like he did in 1905. And 1905 was called the miracle year, or in Latin, annus mirabilis. Anyway, here we have x prime equal to x naught, or x zero times sine of phi prime. Phi prime will change, and I will discuss how this will change in a moment. Then we have y prime equal to y zero prime, which can be obtained, as I said, by considering Lorentz transformations, and it's equal to beta times y naught minus v and naught over c. So, as I said, you can derive this, for example, by considering the previous lecture, the previous video, or also by using Lorentz transformations with tensors, for example. Then we have sine phi prime, then we have z prime equal to beta z naught plus v m naught over c sine of phi prime, and then we have L prime equal to L zero sine phi prime, M prime equal to beta M zero plus V Z zero over C sine phi prime, N prime equal to beta N zero minus V Y zero over C sine of phi prime. Then we have phi prime, which can be written in the same form because remember that we are in a frame of reference which is inertial. So this must be written in the same form as phi. So it will be omega prime times here instead of t we have tau minus one over c. The speed of light is the same. Then we have l prime xi plus m prime era plus n prime zeta. And now we can substitute the expressions for tau, xi, era, and zeta, because we know how to express these variables with respect to the old variables, or I should say the variables in the stationary frame t, x, y, z. So if we do that, phi, so let's start from the expression for phi, we have omega, and then here I have t, but instead of t, I'm going to replace beta tau plus v over c squared xi. So I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to start from phi here, and I'm going to replace the expressions for t in terms of xi, tau, and so on and so forth, x, will be a function of xi, tau, and so on and so forth, and something similar for y and z. y will be a function of era, and z will be a function of zeta. And here I have minus one over c, then I have l beta xi plus v tau, which is the expression for x. This one is the expression for x plus m era plus n zeta. Now, this expression here, when I change the reference frame, will become phi prime. So this will have to be phi prime when I change coordinates. So if I start from this expression for phi, and I change these variables by using the frame of reference, which is lowercase k, the moving frame, then phi will have to be, will have to become phi prime. So this will be phi prime. Therefore, these two expressions here will have to be equal. And now if I do the algebra here, I get omega, I can rewrite the expression like this, omega beta one minus V L over C. Then here I have tau minus one over C. And then I have L minus V over C divided by one minus V L over C. Xi 
plus m divided by beta 1 minus vl over c eta plus n over beta 1 minus vl over c zeta like this at this point we recognize that this should be omega prime whereas this will have to be L prime, this will have to be M prime, and this will have to be N prime. You can check that also in this frame of reference, you have that the magnitude squared of the vector representing the normal to the surface, the surface is the surface of the electromagnetic wave, is equal to 1. So L prime squared plus M prime squared plus N prime squared will be equal to 1. This is still true. If you do the algebra from here, and also remember that L squared plus M squared plus N squared is also equal to 1. What we are really interested in here is the expression for omega prime. Omega prime, we found it to be omega times 1 minus LV over C divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. Now, if we draw the surface of the electromagnetic wave, so this is just a sketch, and here we represent the normal, this normal has these three components, L, M, N, we are in a reference frame in which the velocity v of the moving frame as components v0, 0, 0. So we are going along the x-axis and this angle here between n and v, let's suppose that it is equal to phi. So the dot product between the direction of v and n is equal to l and it is also equal to the cosine of phi. So l is equal to the cosine of phi. For this dot product, I'm just considering the direction of v, not the magnitude of v. So in principle, I should also multiply by the magnitude of v. With this notation, omega prime can be written like this. So instead of omega prime, let's write nu prime, which is the frequency omega prime divided by 2 pi. So we can also rewrite the same expression by dividing this by 2 pi, and we know that Omega divided by 2 pi can also be written as a frequency in hertz instead of an angular frequency. So we have nu here, then we have 1 minus L, which is cosine phi, V over C, divided by the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. Now this is a very general expression, and if the angle between the velocity V and the normal is zero, then of course we have nu prime equal to nu 1 minus v over c divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared, which can also be written as nu square root of 1 minus v over c divided by 1 plus v over c. These two equations here represent the relativistic Doppler principle. Now, let's also consider the equation for L prime, this one, L prime is equal to L minus V over C divided by 1 minus VL over C. And we know that in this case, L represents the cosine of the angle between the velocity V with respect to the normal to the surface, to the, the surface of the electromagnetic wave. So we can also rewrite it in this form, cosine of phi prime which is the angle as seen from the moving frame equal to cosine phi minus v over c divided by 1 minus cosine phi v over c. And this formula is quite important. It's called the law of aberration. Let me write it here. It's the law of aberration. And let's try to give a simple example where we have an electromagnetic wave, this is the normal, and let's assume that we are moving perpendicular to the normal, so the velocity v 
is moving in this direction and this angle here is pi over 2. The formula for the law of aberration will give me cosine of phi prime equal to minus v over c because the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. So in this case, it means that the angle as seen from the moving frame will not be equal to pi over 2. So the cosine will be non-zero. It will be slightly negative if we are moving in the positive direction for velocity, of course. And there is a small correction because if v is much smaller than c, then of course this will be almost equal to zero. But there is still a correction to this angle of pi over 2. It will be slightly greater than pi over 2 because the cosine of something greater than pi over 2 will be negative. So I'm assuming that this is the positive direction for velocity. And the other possibility is that we are going closer to this electromagnetic wave. So this is n and we are moving in this direction where the velocity v is going in the opposite direction of this positive direction for v here. So in this case, we have to treat v as negative. The angle between n and v is still equal to pi over 2, but the cosine of phi prime in this case will be positive because we have minus v over c and minus v is positive so this will be slightly positive meaning that in the moving frame the orientation the direction let's say of n will go slightly towards v because we are approaching the source this is quite intuitive if you think about it now the last thing that i want to do here is to reconsider this expression for the frequency. So nu prime is the frequency measured in the moving frame. Nu is the frequency measured in the stationary frame. And also now we know that the energy of light in general is proportional to the frequency. It's well known. So we can also rewrite the expression in terms of energy. So the energy of light as seen from the moving frame e prime is equal to e the energy measured in the stationary frame times 1 minus cosine of phi v over c divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared and we are going to use this expression here in the next video just like einstein did in a different article to prove that if a body gives off some energy in the form of radiation, its mass diminishes. And this is none other than the famous law in physics, E equals mc squared, this famous equation. So we are going to follow the steps that Einstein took to arrive at that expression.